okay guys welcome back to this uh, online lecture and uh, today our topic is uh, analysis and design of two way slab system uh, we have discussed the introduction section uh, and uh, i will go through it very briefly today to make it a complete lecture the introduction as uh, i told you previously that i have made this lecture a uh, very detailed so that you can yourself go through it and can learn the things uh, slabs can be considered as structural members whose depth is small as compared to their length and width. We all we already know that from our previous concepts of concrete design. The simplest form of a slab is one supported on two opposite sides, right? Which primarily deflect in one direction and is referred to as one-way slab. And uh, in our previous course, we already learned the analysis and design of one-way slab system. And the design of one-way slab was discussed in previous subject PRC1, plain and reinforced concrete one. When the slab is supported on all four sides and the length is less than twice the width, okay, so length to width ratio is less than two, the slab will deflect in both the directions and the load on the slab are transferred to all four supports. This slab is referred to as a two-way slab, okay. In this slab, the bending moments and the deflections in such slabs are less than those in one-way slabs. Although in one-way slab, there is only uh, one direction in which we have to provide the main reinforcement. And in two-way slab, we have to provide the main reinforcement in both the directions. Uh, this the thing make the two-way slab a bit safe because uh, the deflections and the bending, bending moments at the same point uh, will be less than the one-way slab. Thus, the same slab can carry more loads when supported on four sides, okay? The load in this case is carried in two directions and the bending moment in each direction is much less than the bending moment in, in the slab if the load were carried in one direction only. Typical slab beam golden arrangements of one and two slabs are shown in figure one. This is your figure one. The A is where one way slab and length to width ratio is greater than two. And the B is a two-way slab where length to width ratio is less than or equal to two. So this is your one-way slab and the load is primarily uh, transferred in this shorter direction. So you have to provide the main bars in this shorter direction. Okay. And this is two-way slab in which the load is uh, distributed in both the directions and you have to provide the main reinforcement in the X axis as well as in Y axis. Right. Now types of two-way slabs. Uh, Structural two-way concrete slabs may be classified as follows. Number one, two-way slabs on beams. So this is a simple thing. This can occur when the two-way slab is supported by beams on all four sides. The loads from the slab are transferred simply to all four supporting beams, uh, which in turn transfer the loads to the column. Now the percentage of uh, load that is transferred to the beams uh, depends upon the aspect ratio, that is length to width ratio. Okay. Uh, number two, the second type is flat slabs. A flat slab is a two-way slab reinforced in two directions that usually does not have beams or girders, okay? And the loads are transferred directly to the supporting columns. So slab and directly supporting the load to the columns. The column tend to punch through the slab, which can be treated by three methods. Number one, we can use a drop panel and a column capital. Number two, we can use a drop panel only. And number three, we can use a column capital only. Now, what are these three? Here you can see that. All right. This is your column and this is your flat plate. What is flat plate? This is your flat plate. Okay. But let's first discuss the flat slab. Uh, this one is your first option. This is your column capital. Uh, sorry, this is your first option. If you go to a previous slide, the first option was a column capital and a drop panel both are used. So see, this is your column capital only and this is your drop panel only. The drop panel is that uh, in the vicinity of the column, you increase the depth of the slab to counteract the punching shear. And uh, the column capital is uh, that where column is meeting the slab, you just increase the cross-sectional area of the column so that uh, the, the punching area of the slab increases and increases the shear strength of the slab. And the third option is that uh, at this point, the, at the joint, you provide both the drop panel as well as the column capital to make the slab more safe, okay? So you can counteract this uh, thing with these three uh, kinds, right? This is your flat slab. 
What is flat plate? A flat plate is a two-way slab system consisting of a uniform slab that rests directly on columns and does not have beams or column capitals and prop panels. See, this is your flat plate. You are not providing any beam and you are not providing any of these three options. The slab is directly resting on this column. In this case, the column also tends to punch through the slab, producing diagonal tensile stresses. Therefore, a general increase in the slab thickness is required or special reinforcement is used or we can provide concealed beams in the slab. Okay, we will discuss these things in detail in the coming uh, parts of this lecture. Okay, what are these? First, let's go through it, then we will see the uh, figure. Number four uh, type of the two-way slab is two-way rib slabs and the waffle slab system. So this type of slab consists of a floor slab with a length to weight ratio less than 2. We already know that the thickness of slab is usually 2 to 4 inch and is supported by ribs or joists in two directions. The ribs are arranged in each direction at spacing of about 20 to 30 inch that is uh, 2.5 feet center to center producing, producing square or rectangular shapes. Figure 2C on previous slide, we will go to it. The ribs can also be arranged at 45 to 60 degree from the central line of the slab. Okay, so the the uh, ribs can be at 0 degree or 90 degree or can be at 45 degree or 60 degree, be uh, just for the sake of architectural shapes to make it beautiful. Then there are three types in this uh, waffle slab: a two-way rib system with voids between the ribs. A two-way rib system with permanent fillers between ribs and a two-way rib system with voids between the ribs with the ribs continuing in both direction without supporting beams. Okay, you just go through it. Let me show you this rib system or waffle system. See, this is the plan, and he, uh, here are your sections. So just check uh, check out the sections. Right. So these are this is your slab. Uh, it is 3 inch slab and these are your ribs which are 20 inches uh, to 30 inches apart and these ribs can be empty like here or can be filled like this filler okay and uh, this is just uh, a complete summary of what we have uh, seen for example this is a two-way slab system and slab is resting on the beams and beams are transferring the load to the columns okay this is your first case the second case is your flat slab uh, sorry flat plate this is your flat plate where the slab is resting directly on the columns and the third is your flat slab where uh, in the vicinity of the column you provide uh, the column capital and the drop panels and the fourth is your waffle slab. Now coming to the design concepts, an exact analysis of forces and displacements in a two-way slab is complex. Due to its highly indeterminate nature, this is true even when the effects of creep and non-linear behavior of concrete are neglected. Still, it is a complex, okay, to exactly analyze a two-way slab system. The numerical methods such as finite elements can be used, but simplified methods such as those presented by the ACI code are more suitable for practical design. The ACI code chapter 8 assumes that the slabs behave as wide shallow beams that form with the columns above and below them a rigid frame. The validity of this assumption of dividing the structure into equivalent frames has been verified by analytical and experimental methods. It is also established that for factored load capacity of two way slab with restraint boundaries is about twice <coughs> that calculated by theoretical analysis because a great deal of moment distribution redistribution occurs in the slab before failure. We already know that, okay. At high loads, large deformations and deflections are expected, such as minimum slab thickness is required to maintain adequate deflection and cracking conditions under service loads. The ACI code specifies two methods for the design of two-way slabs. Number one is direct design method, which we, we, we will learn in this uh, lecture that what is DDM, how to analyze and design a slab using direct design method. And the second is equivalent frame method. Both are 
specified by the ACI code 318. So this is your longitudinal and transverse equivalent frames in plan view and see this is your uh, elevation and perspective views okay this is your equivalent frame that how you divide your slab into equivalent frame and then how you analyze and design it so coming to the concepts of uh, direct design method this is your equivalent frame method and this is your direct design method see <clears throat> the part of the slab that is adjacent to the column line the center line of this column in this direction this part is called column strip and the part that is away from the column is the middle strip for example let me show you the same thing in the sap 2000 when we open a new model right so if i go to the flat slab and uh, for the purpose of uh, understanding first let me give you that uh, i am just talking about only one bay right and the width is 120 inch or if you want to talk about uh, into feet then uh, let's do it 15 feet right So that's 180 inches and uh, it asks you about the middle strip width so the half of 180 is 90 and I am taking it 90 in both the directions I am not uh, doing anything right now so see this is your slab okay give it a minute this is your slab on the one base it is supported by columns on all the four corners you can see that this is your middle strip see this part is your middle strip and this is your column strip right now let me show you in a much clear way for example make let me make it feet so this time I am doing it with the two base. It says seven point five is an illegal value. So what will be the legal value? Let me make it 8. Okay. So see, I have given two bays in the x direction and only one bay in y direction. So this is your one slab uh, and this is your another slab. This is your middle strip and this is your column strip of this slab. So this is your center line of columns and you can see that very easily that the uh, part of slab uh, that is uh, in the vicinity of column. This is column strip of this portion and this is column strip of this portion right. So a complete column strip. This is a complete column strip. This is a complete middle strip. This is a complete middle strip and this is half column strip and this is half column strip okay. So that's how column strips and middle strips uh, working and uh, let's go to our lecture. Figure 5. This is your figure 5 and it shows an interior panel of a two-way slab supported on columns A, B, C and D. Like the first one I showed you in the SAP 2000. Where there is a the portion of slab uh, nearby the columns this is called the column strip see cs is column strip 
and ms is middle strip and again cs so the portion of the slab uh, in the vicinity of column this is column strip these lines okay and this is column strip and the portion uh, that is not of, uh, of for the column strip the remaining portion is the middle strip in the x direction as well as in the y direction okay and uh, this is your the deflected shape right in one uh, what di one direction that is in longitudinal direction and this is your deflected shape in the transverse direction so you can see in the longitudinal direction this is your column strip this is your column strip and the remaining is the middle strip and similarly in the transverse direction this is your column strip this is your column strip and the remaining is middle strip so what you do is to find the width of the column strip and the remaining it will be the middle strip right if the panel is loaded uniformly the slab will deflect in both directions right with maximum deflection at center o the highest points will be at the columns a b c and d because they are the supports thus the part of the slab around the column will have a convex shape c this is your convex shape a b c and a gradual change in the shape of the slab occurs from convexity at the columns to concavity at the center of the panel O, each radial line crossing a point of inflection. See this. Here it was convex and at the center it is concave. Right? Sections at O, E, F, G and H will have positive bending moments whereas the periphery of columns will have maximum negative bending moments. So the middle strip will have the positive bending moment and the column strip will have maximum negative bending moments. Considering a strip along AFB, where is AFB? See, this is your A, this is your F, this is your B, right? So this is your AFB strip. The strip bends like a continuous beam having negative moments at A and B and positive moments at F, see? Having negative moments at A and B and positive moments at F, right? This strip extends between the two columns A and B and continues on both sides of the panel forming a column strip. So basically this A and B, this is your column strip, right? And it is passing from A and B and extending continuing in both the directions. Similarly, a strip along EOG, EOG, where is E, this, this is your O, this is your G. So now we are talking about middle strip, okay? The EOG is here. We'll have negative moments at E and G and positive moments at O forming a middle strip. A third strip along DHC will have similar to the AFV because that is also column strip, see? DHC. So there are three strips in each uh, slab, uh, in each slab, uh, in each two-way slab, that is two column strips and one middle strip, okay? Therefore, the panel can be divided into three, three strips, one in the middle along EOG, referred to as middle strip, and one on each side uh, uh, towards the columns, that is along AFB and DHC, referred to as column strips. So now uh, from here on we will talking about uh, column strips and middle strips, okay? Each of three strips behaves as a continuous beam in a similar way. The panel is divided into three strips in orthogonal direction and you can go through it, okay? Referring to figure 5a, now going to figure 5a, this is your 5a. Please consider this figure, okay? It can be seen that the middle strips are supported on the column strips, which in turn transfer the loads onto the columns A, B, C, and D in this panel. So, this is your middle strip, and it is supported on the uh, column strip in this direction. See, this is your column strip in uh, orthogonal direction. And this is your middle strip in longitudinal direction. So this longitudinal middle strip is resting on these two column strips. 
so it is transferring load to column strips and column strips are then transferring loads to the columns therefore the column strips carry more load than the middle strips consequently the positive bending moment in each column strip is greater than the positive bending moment at o in the middle strip okay so where is point o the point o is this point where both the middle strips see the middle strip of uh, longitudinal direction and the middle strip of transverse direction are meeting and none of middle strip is resting on this column strip this portion is completely middle strip right so here the bending moment will be the least the minimum right also the negative moments at the columns a b c and d in the column strips are greater than the negative moments at e f g and h in the middle strip that is obvious the portions of the design moments assigned to the columns and middle strips are discussed next and the extent of each of the column and middle strips in a panel is defined by the aci 318 8, 4, 1, 5, and 6. The column strip is defined by a slab width on each side of the column central line x in figure 5, right? For example, uh, if you go to the figure 5 on the previous slide, this is your x. This is your one panel, right? So, uh, from the central line of the column the till distance x. So, what is this x? This x is a uh, equal to the one fourth of the smaller of the panel dimensions l1 and l2 for example if l1 is 12 and l2 is 15 so one fourth of l1 will be the smaller and that will be the width of the column strip x including beams if they are present where l1 is a span length in direction moments are being determined for example if you are concerned in this direction so this is your l1 and this is your l2 and in this case this is your l1 and this is your l2 okay so it depends on uh, which direction you are concerned the longitudinal or the transverse one now coming to the minimum slab thickness to control deflection the sections are provided here it specifies a minimum slab thickness in two way slabs to control deflection the magnitude of a slab's deflection depends on many variables including the flexural stiffness of the slab which in turn is a function of the slab thickness h by increasing the slab thickness the flexural stiffness of the slab is increased and consequently the slab deflection is reduced because deflection is always uh, converts to the moment of inertia and moment of inertia is mainly depending upon the thickness because the calculation of deflection in two-way slab is complicated and to avoid excessive deflections the aci code limits the thickness of these slabs by adopting the following three empirical limitations which are based on experimental research so if these limitations are not met it will be necessary to compute deflection so first limitation is for al alpha fm uh, greater than 0.2 and less than or equal to 2 so in that case your h will be uh, fulfilling this requirement in this formula is in psi and this formula is in megapascals and uh, in this case the slab thickness should not be less than five inches the second case is for alpha fm is greater than uh, two uh, so here your h will be uh, calculated by this equation and in this case the thickness should not be less than 3.5 in first case it should not be less than five inches in second case it should not be less than 3.5 inches and the third case is for alpha fm is less than or equal to 0.2 so here the minimum slab thickness without interior beams is calculated from table 1 this is your table 1 and here all the details are given okay without drop panels and with drop panels exterior panels and interior panel so all the details are given in table 1 and uh, what are ln beta alpha alpha f these are presented here you can just simply uh, go through the lecture and check what these things are and alpha f is equal to e i b divided by e i s so it is actually the 
beam strip and column strip or it is uh, IB is the gross moment of inertia of beam section and IS is the moment of inertia of cross section of slab so all the details are given you can just uh, go through it and uh, check by yourself however the thickness of any slab shall not be less than the following number one for slab with alpha less than two then thickness should be greater than or equal to five and the second one if uh, the alpha, uh, alpha fm is greater than two slab thickness should be greater than 3.5 so if no beams are used as in the case of flat plates then alpha f is equal to zero and alpha fm is equal to zero the aci code equations for calculating slab thickness h take into account the effect of the span length the panel shape the steel reinforcement yield stress fy and the flexural stiffness of beams when very stiff beams are used so equation one may give a small slab thickness and equation two may control for flat plates and flat slabs when no beams are used at all the minimum slab thickness may be determined directly from table 8311 of aci which is shown in table one so for the case of uh, flat plates and flat slab you have to uh, check this table one for the minimum thickness of the slab okay other aci code limitations are summarized as follows for number one for panels with discontinuous edge and beams with a minimum alpha equal to 0.8 must be used otherwise minimum slab thickness calculated by equation one and equation two must be increased by at least 10 percent okay for this discontinuous edges for example the end spans Number two, the drop panels should extend in each direction from the central end of a support distance not less than one sixth of the span length in that direction between center to center of support and also project below the slab at least h by four. So this is the design of the drop panel that it uh, thickness should be uh, the uh, one fourth of the slab thickness and its length should be the one fourth of the span length. And the uh, Third one is regardless of the values obtained from previous two equations, the thickness of two way slabs shall not be less than the following. For example, A for slabs without interior beams or drop panels, 5 inch should be the slab thickness. B for slabs without interior beams but with drop panels, put 4 inch slab. And C for slabs with beams on all four sides with alpha fm greater than 2 minimum three and a half inch slab thickness should be provided and if this alpha fm is less than 2 then 5 inch slab thickness should be provided okay this is our uh, first example a very simple example of course not on the direct design method uh, i will uh, solve the direct design method example in the next video lecture a flat plate floor system with panels 4 by 20 feet <coughs> what it says that there are four panels and 20 feet right these are your 20 feet or uh, i think if i have missed two here it is i think 24 by 20 feet so i think uh, the longitudinal direction is 24 feet and the transverse is 20 feet so it's 24 24 by 20 feet is supported on 20 inch square columns the column is 20 inch square using the aci code equations determine the minimum slab thickness required for the interior and corner panels this is your corner panel and this is your interior panel edge beams are not used use fc prime 4 ksi and fy is 60 ksi right so solution for corner panel number one the minimum slab thickness is ln by 30 putting the values and it comes out to be 8.93 say 9 inches and for the interior panel which is number 3 see the interior panel is 3 and the edge is number 1 so interior panel which is number 3 and with the details given the ln is equal to sorry the minimum slab thickness is ln by 33 we are putting the values and it comes out to be 8.5 so for uniformity uh, a a 9 inch uh, thick slab is adopted okay it was a simple example the second example is the floor system shown in figure 7 consists of solid slabs and beams in two directions 
supported on 20 inches per column using the AC equation to determine the minimum slab thickness required for an interior panel. So this is your interior panel. You have the material properties. You have the solid slabs and beams in two directions. You have the cross-sectional details for uh, uh, the different beams provided. For example, the L beam and the T beams. To use equation 1, alpha m should be calculated first. Therefore, it is required to determine IB, moment of inertia of beam, moment of inertia of slab, and alpha f for the beams and slabs in the long and short directions, right? Two, the gross moment of inertia of the beam is calculated for the section shown in figure 7b, which is made up of the beam and the extension of the slab on the each side of the beam. Here x is equal to y, but not more than four times the slab thickness. Assume h is equal to 7 inch since we do not know the uh, slab thickness in this case. So we are assuming a 7 inch to be checked later, right? x is equal to y is equal to 22 minus 7, which is 15. And the 22 is the uh, depth of the beam and uh, 7 is the depth of or thickness of the slab. So we got 15 inches and it is less than 4 into 7, which is 28 inches. Therefore, BE is equal to 16 plus 2 into 15, which is 46 inches. You can check the ACI code for calculating the BE. And the T section is shown in figure 7C. See, see? Uh, you can see the uh, figure 7C where T beam is shown. Now, determine the centroid of the section by taking movements about the top of the flange. So, area of flange is 7 into 46. 46 is the width right and 7 is the depth right area of web is 16 into 15 15 is the width of the web and 16 is the depth c this is depth and this is width so total area is 562 square inches and uh, to calculate the y we are just equating the first moment of area 322 area of flange into its uh, uh, centroidal distance 3.5 plus 240 which is the area of web into its centroidal distance 7 plus 7.5 you know what is 7.5 this is this 15 uh, half of the 15 7.5 and the 7 is the uh, depth of the slab is equal to 562 into total depth right so you will get the total depth y is equal to 8.2 inches so putting that you will get IB is equal to 22,453. Now, IS, putting the values in IS, BH cube by 12, and putting alpha FI, EIB divided by EIS, which is 3.27. The moment of inertia of this slab in short direction is IS, where B is equal to 24, and H is equal to 7. right and uh, uh, this is in the long direction similarly in the short direction you get the value of alpha f2 which is 2.27 uh, the alpha fm is the average of alpha f1 and alpha f2 so alpha fm is equal to 3.27 plus 2.27 by 2 the average is 3.23 which is greater than 2 so if you go to the third point C. Uh, sorry, the second point. When your alpha fm is greater than 2, right? So, which equation will you use? So, now it is greater than 2. So, beta is equal to this one, 1.22. Determine minimum h using equation 2, right? And ln is 22.33. So, h is equal to 6.27, which is greater than the minimum requirement of 3.5 inches. Okay. So, we are using a slab with a thickness of 6.5 inches. These are the references and uh, if you have any questions uh, in this lecture, then kindly uh, ask me your questions in the comment sections and uh, I will be very happy to answer those questions. The next video lecture will be about the direct design method, the solved example on it and uh, <coughs> see you there. Thank you very much.